Well, thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, gentlemen, for your excellent testimony. And uh, just, uh, Mr. Pinto, I want to follow up on something that I, you commented upon in your testimony, and that is uh, the need for both strong supervision and adequate capital. And, you know, we have a debate right now about adequate capital. I think you also suggest that it has to be counter-cyclical, that capital has to be built up. So if you could elaborate on, on those points, I'd appreciate it. Thank you, Senator. Uh, I'd be happy to. The, um, as I said, the mortgage business is countercyclical, has these two uh, components of risk, the second of which is this catastrophic risk that mm -hmm. occurs because of generally some external event. Mm -hmm. And uh, you, um, uh, back in the early 1980s, it was the collapse of oil prices, mm -hmm. which then led to high unemployment in Texas and elsewhere. Uh, so you don't know what it's going to be. You just know you have to be prepared for it. And the, the problem, and Fannie Mae is the perfect example. Fannie Mae uh, had a static capital requirement that was 45 basis points uh, on less than half a percent on its uh, guaranteed loans. Uh, that stayed pretty constant. Uh, they were accumulating very little in the way of uh, uh, loss reserves because of the way the accounting works for that. And so as the risk was building up in the system, but it didn't look like risk was building up in the system because because delinquency rates looked very low. Mm. Well, that was being fed by the boom that was keeping them mm. down, and everybody was thinking everything was fine. And uh, what happened was uh, they weren't accumulating any, accumulating any additional capital, and then when they, uh, the boom ended uh, and they collapsed, A, they were very thinly capitalized. The, the, the mortgage-backed securities were 220 to 1, and uh, their actual capital was very weak. Um, half of their capital was tax-advantaged. Well, again, if you're a financial guarantee entity to invest your money in something that you need to make money in order to have your capital be worth something, it seems, you know, is backwards. So those are the kinds of... Right. Uh, but in the context today, when we're, to, we're talking about uh, capital rules for these large mega banks mm -hmm. and for particularly large mega banks, uh, my sense is that you would suggest that there needs to be um, more than less capital. I, in general, more, and in general, if the, if the entities are too big to fail, they should be smaller. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Hartling, uh, you, one of the issues here in the qualified residential mortgage is, you know, uh, what's the down payment and what's the sort of percentage of your income that you're devoting to housing? And I think one of the, sh uh, the reactions across America, not, you know, in one Wall Street, but on Main Street, was this housing crisis evolved was people were shocked saying, they didn't put any money down, and they, it was 45% of their income was a mortgage payment. Uh, so, you know, now looking at this proposed uh, regulation, and it is a proposed regulation, we were very general in our description of what the QRM should be. There seems to be there, there there's got to be some notion of a, I think in the minds of people on the street, of a minimum down payment. Uh, to, to make this a, a safe loan, a traditional loan. So just for, for what's the average down payment that you would insist upon in your very well-run well community bank? Is it 10%? Is it 15%? Uh, we, we have a couple of different programs. Uh, certainly the uh, most of everything we sell to Freddie Mac has got the 20% down, uh, the federal home loan, and, and we actually have a program we do internally in our bank called Home Buyers Assistance that we have 5 10 or 15% down. What you really find out is it's not the down payment, it's other things like payment to income ratio, it's did you come up with your own down payment, uh, what's your credit card debt. Uh, it's not one silver bullet that decides if that's gonna be a good loan or not. And you, our concern would be if you just look at down payment, you don't wanna be an asset lender, and that's, that's the way you're gonna get paid back. You, you really wanna look at the uh, probability of payment from your customer through a regular source. But I would, can I presume that, that the, as you would think appropriate, that when this regulation is finally approved, it would have some combination, as you suggest, of minimum down payment. In fact, I, I, my sense is most people are still shocked that people were getting, well, I grew up in, mm -hmm. you know, in the 50s, 60s, 70s, where you, you had to put money down. Uh, some combination of down payment uh, and also some percentage of your housing per income and also other expenses per income. Are we just arguing about what the proper, you know, sort of numbers are? Be my, concern, my concern is this. I, I saw the market a couple years ago when we didn't participate in the subprime, and what I would see happen 
is I would see someone selling a home for $100,000. They would increase the price to 110 or 115. That, that person, that seller would give the buyer the down payment and he had the down payment. So they gamed the system. No, so I, it, that's what I'm, I'm concerned yeah. about when you put some hard ratios in there. No. Um, but of course, the other concern is if you don't have any of these rules of the road, you get exactly what we had, which was gaming, yes. no money down, mm -hmm. great products, et cetera. So I think you know the challenge we gave the regulators was come up with a appropriate balance mechanism that exempts certain loans loans from the requirement to hold, and, and you wouldn't have to hold the loan. You could you, you could sell anything you want to the security, securitize it. They would have to hold five percent, and we thought, and I think you know again the logic we can examine mm -hmm. is that if they had to hold some of these, they wouldn't be quite as willing to buy terrible products that were emanating from you know, many different sources. So I, I'm just trying to get a sense from a community banker of, of, of what you're doing and what we have to do. Well, I think what we're doing is when we see less of a down payment, we have somewhat of a different standards, maybe a little higher standards in some of these other areas, and we hold them a little firmer to those. Um, because it's all risk, and we, and we don't want our customer not to be able to make their payment. We don't want them to have to leave their home and, and have it foreclosed or sell it out from underneath them. So I think it, it, Prudence says that if you have less of a down payment, Senator, you probably have to have a little bit more stringent underwriting with those lesser down payments. Thank you.